Good morning, afternoon and evening everyone. My name is Liam and welcome back to what is going to be our last battle of the Pokemon Premier League this season. Now last week we didn't have a battle, that is because our opponent Frank Trode had to forfeit against us so that automatically gave us the 6-0 victory which puts us in the position of this match right here which is the playoff match. Now for those of you who don't know what the playoff match is, there are actually two divisions in the Pokemon Premier League. The Division 1, which is the one we are in, and there is Division 2, which is a whole other table with a whole different bunch of teams. And the way the playoff match works is because we finished 10th in the table, we have to have a match against the team that is in Division 2 who finished in 3rd. The winner of this match goes to goes to Division 1, the loser of this match goes to Division 2. So, our match this week is against Division 2's very own Melbourne Victory Star, coached by Electric Storm. And his team is Victini, Mega Sceptile, Togekiss, Tyrantrum, Raikou, Zoroark, Gorgeist, Quillfish, and Pilo Swine. We have to fight another goddamn Victini. I hate fighting damn Victini. Also, don't like the idea of fighting a Togekiss or a Tyrantrum and Zoroark, Dark types in general, really do a number to our team. So fighting a Zoroark is terrible, especially since in our second ever match in the Pokemon Premier League, Zoroark kind of sort of destroyed us. So had to prep around that quite a bit this time. But who wants to see the team that is going to carry us to victory and keep us in the Division 1? We are bringing, here they are, the All-Star team. Our very first pick of the season, the very first pick in our draft, draft format. It is the mystical Pokemon known as Mew, carrying the Choice Scarf, who has Trick, Dazzling Gleam, Earth Power and Sludge Wave. Modest natured, because I really don't think he's going to bring a jolly Choice Scarf Victini, I can't see it happening. Trick is there to choice is to put a choice scarf on Togekiss to potentially lock him into defog because he really does not want sticky webs on his side of the field or rocks. It's also there to put on the Gorgeist or the Pilo Swine. And worst case scenario, I can just keep my choice scarf. Dazzling Gleam hits quite a few things on his team. Earth Power hits the rest, and Sludge Wave is just there to pick up the pieces, really. No Stab Psychic this week, we didn't really need it. He doesn't really have much on his team that does that Psychic would really bother, but this moveset covers pretty much most of his team. And if I keep the Choice Scarf, then this can be a pretty good win condition. Next up, we have Facial, the Spirit Tomb, holding the leftovers, is a Calm Natured, and his Calm Mind, Rest, Shadow Ball, and Will-O-Wisp. Will-O-Wisp is just there for things that want to switch in. If he is banded Victini, if I bring him in on the Zen Headbutt, I can Will-O-Wisp whatever comes in. If for some reason his Togekiss is not carrying Dazzling Gleam, it doesn't really want to stay in either. I can Will-O-Wisp a Pilo Swine. Gore guys, just residual damage on a lot of things is nice. And the Calm Mind Rest set is to set up on things like the Pilo Swine, the Gore guys, things like that. And also, Calm Nature just benefits us a bit more. Apart from Dazzling Gleam, Facial can take decent hits from Special Mega Sceptile. It can take decent hits from Special Victini if it's not dazzling, not carrying Dazzling Gleam. Spirit Team was a pretty good Special Wall this week. Next up, we have Randy, the Mega Venusaur, who has Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Synthesis, and Earthquake. Uh, I don't remember what nature. Sassy. So we have two special defensive mons this week because he's got some real special offensive threats. I know he has Zor I know he has Tyrantrum, Zoroark can be physical, and Victini, but I thought he was going to bring special Victini, Sceptile can be special, Togekiss is obviously special, Raikou is special. I had to bring some good special bulk. And Venusaur walls quite a lot on his team. It can take two, it can take two extra sensories from Raikou. It can take Air Slash from Togekiss, okay. Not great, but it can take one at least, and I can fire back with Sludge Bomb. And Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb are good for stabs, and Earthquake hits any Victini that wants to switch in, or Raikou that wants to switch in. 
or the what's the other one? Quillfish that might want to switch in. Next up we have Golem DeVito who has Earthquake, Stealth Rock, Rock Slide and Toxic holding the Rocky Helmet again, Impish Natured. This worked really well the first time we faced the Victini so I decided to bring it back. This time we don't have Heavy Slam, I just put Toxic on there for anything that wants to switch. And the Rocks would be fantastic this week. This is my Tyrantrum counter, it also for chip damage on Victini using U-Turn. Golem has a very simple job this week. Next up, our Playmaker. This is our Playmaker. Galvantula, Sticky Web, Hidden Power Ground, Volt Switch and Bug Buzz with Timid Natured. Focus Sash, Sticky Webs have to go up. His team does not want Sticky Webs up because then Mamoswine, who is our next member, Mamoswine runs a train through his team. With Sticky Webs up, Mamoswine can take on Sceptile, Victini, Tyrantrum, Togekiss, Gorgeist, Piloswine, Quillfish, pretty much anyone on his team. Galvantula also hits some decent stuff. Volt Switch does good damage against Togekiss. I got Hidden Power Ground on there for the... Uh, for the... Who is it for? For the um, Victini. And it was for something else as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. Potentially Tyrantrum switching in on Volt Switch as well. And Bug Buzz is just good stab. And last of all, our big heavy hitter, Sandy, holding the Life Orb. Jolly Natured to take advantage of that sticky web plan that we have. Superpower to hit Piloswine, Earthquake, Ice Shard and Ice Will Crash for everything else. Mamoswine can destroy his team. So then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, get ready for what is our last battle as we fight literally for survival. Over to you, Battle Liam. Right guys, welcome to the battle. As you can see, Jack has decided to bring the Zoroark, the pesky Zoroark, which really... Ah, I hate fighting dark types with the team we have. He brought the Togekiss for that defog, like I said, he cannot afford to let webs and rocks be up on his side of the field. He brought Tyrantrum, because Tyrantrum does really go well against our team, except for Golem, but then even Tyrantrum can carry Earthquake, so Tyrantrum is just a really good mon to t punch a wall in us. He brought the Mega Sceptile though, which I was very surprised about. Being that we have a Mamo Swine, unless he is pretty much full defensive Sceptile, Ice Shard is going to one hit KO him. He brought the Raikou because especially defense, uh, special attacking Pokemon, uh, pretty good again against my team. And Raikou has a lot of coverage for Pokemon. He pretty much can hit every Pokemon hard on my team except for the Venusaur. No, except for no, he can hit Venusaur extra sensory. Oh god, ah, Raikou's so this scary. And then he brought Victini as well as we thought. So the superpower on Mamo Swine is pretty useless because he didn't bring Pyro Swine, which is the only reason we had Superpower on Mamo Swine. And there isn't much on his team that Spirit Tomb is going to set up on. So Spirit Tomb, straight from the start of the battle, is pretty much just a Pokemon to switch into when I need something to take a hit and die. Spirit Tomb, straight away at the team preview, is pretty much useless because it's not going to be Will-O-Wisping very much. It can't really get a Calm Mind up on any of the Pokemon that he's brought. So Spirit Tomb is pretty much useless. But we stick with the game plan. Sticky Webs up. Go from there. Sticky Webs is the priority for this team. I'm trying a little bit different way of watching the match this time. So I'm going to pause it as we go through to explain some of the moves. Because some of, them, some of the moves during this match were pretty goddamn crazy. So let's jump in. Eventually. There we go. Whoa, I was super nervous for this match. I really wanted to win. I needed to. So we start off with the Galvantula. Like I said, game plan, get up webs. He starts off with the Victini. I have no problem just clicking webs. That's why I have a focus sash. If he goes if he kills me, that's fine. I can just go straight out into Mamo Swine and kill something else. He clicks U-turn though to get straight up out. And Galvantula actually takes that pretty well. I'm surprised. That tells me this Victini isn't banded. It's not a banded Victini because that would have done a lot more damage. So straight away, I know it's not that. He goes out into the Sceptile though. 
as he gets caught in the sticky webs. I assume here he thought I was going to just click Vault Switch or he just wanted to see what I was going to do and he wanted to get his Mega Evolution off, which was fine by me. I just clicked Bug Buzz because I didn't want to give him plus one at this point. He just goes for Protect though, so that just makes that move moot. It doesn't really matter. So I click Bug Buzz. Now, here I make a pretty ballsy move. I clicked Bug Buzz trying to just put as much damage on Sceptile as I could before it killed me. Because he protected, I assumed in my head, he thinks I'm just, he thinks I just want to sack off this Galvantula. So I, he, so I was going to click Bug Buzz again. I figured I planned that out in my head and my initial thought was to click Bug Buzz again. But then I thought to myself, even if I click Vault Switch, and it puts him at plus one due to lightning rod and then he kills me I can just go straight out into Mamo Swine, and he has to switch and then I have webs up so it didn't really bother me whether I clicked Volt switch here and he got plus one or he switched out predicting me to go for bug buzz and then I Volt switched on something else so right here as you can see he withdraws it expecting me to go for bug buzz not wanting damage on his septile he goes out into Togekiss, that is the perfect situation as I get my Volt Switch off and do over half damage to Togekiss. That is exactly what we need because now Galvantula is the perfect Togekiss switching as I bring in Mamoswine. He has to switch out here because Ice Shard could kill from this range and he needs to keep Togekiss, he needs to defog at some point. So he switches out into the Victini. He predicts me to go for the Ice Shard here, I believe, but he's caught in the sticky webs. So he, uh, there's not much he can do unless he's scarfed. Ice Shard does next to no damage, and I reveal that I am Life Orb. So he knows that straight away now. I have to switch out here. I switch here. Right. This is, again, another monumental play. I was literally sitting there just thinking, what? could Victini do to me and I remember thinking he's going to bring special Victini even though he has U-turn he's going to bring special Victini just because I have Golem so I just assumed right there and plus when I faced Victini before I put Okaberry on my Mamo Swine and with Thick Fat as well so I know V-Create isn't going to kill Mamo Swine and I know he's not banded so V-Create is not going to kill us and he's not Life Orb as well so I pull the prediction that he was, oh, I came to the conclusion that he was going to go for a grass move. I really thought he was going to go for a special grass move. I thought he was going to go for energy ball. That probably would kill us because Thick Fat does not resist the grass. So thinking that, I just switch straight out into my Venusaur to take the hit, assuming he wasn't going to go for V-Create. And he went for Grass Nut. Just as good as Energy Ball. That was a huge play. That is probably my best play of the season. I get my Mega Evolution off, so V-Create is not going to kill Venusaur either. That is absolutely perfect. And I can click Earthquake to get damage on this Victini, which is exactly what I want. I just want damage on this Victini so it can die to Rocky Helmet later on, or even possibly an Ice Shard. Super effective V-Create does a lot of damage to us, but Thick Fat saves us and we're pretty bulky. He is now at minus two speed, so he can't really stay in past this point. And he has the Shookerberry! So he would have lived the Earthquake from Mamo Swine. But we made him burn up that Shookerberry on the Venusaur. So now Mamo Swine is guaranteed to kill Victini. He's guaranteed to kill Victini if Victini gets caught in sticky webs. He switches out into Raikou here. At this point, I knew I could just click Synthesis because I was going to outspeed pretty much. Even if I didn't outspeed, he would kill Venusaur and then I can go straight back out into Mamo Swine and kill him. So Synthesis was just the best play to make there. I'm back up to nearly full health and I know I can take any one hit this Raikou wants to give. As he goes for the extra sensory, I know I can take one. That does a lot of damage. I thought he was Specs. It's a crit. Suck on my nuts. That was a crit. But I also get some damage off on the Raikou. A lot of damage off on Raikou. Earthquake on Venusaur was a good move. Was a good decision this week and I take the vault switch too so just to pause it one more time here we have our webs up there's damage on Victini there's damage on Raikou Sceptile's already mega evolved so he's now a grass dragon this is the perfect situation for us we are 
really setting up for our Mammoth Swine to just sweep through his team with the combination of Ice Shard and Earthquake and Webs. This is like going exactly to game plan right now. And Mega Venusaur is the perfect special wall that we could have asked for. So you Volt Switch there, we took it pretty well. He's going to go straight back out into Togekiss as I decided at this point to click Synthesis again. If he went for another situation of if he killed me, I just go out to Mammo Swine and kill. If he didn't kill me, I got my health back. He goes out into Tokis though. I assume he's going to click Defog. So I just go straight back out into my Galvantula to set up webs. I know I'm going to outspeed him. So he clicks the Defog. I know it. at this point, if he clicks Air Slash, I'm going to outspeed him and set up the webs. So he kills me, but I still got my webs up. If he doesn't kill me, I get my webs up. So I just click Sticky Web here, no problem. As he switches out into the Raikou. Maybe predicting me to go for Volt Switch just to kill off Togekiss. But like I said, my game plan is just webs. Webs, webs, webs all day long. At this point, at this point, I made the decision that I do not want to sack off Galvantula. Because he's clearly, he can bring in Togekiss on my Venusaur. He feels confident enough to bring Togekiss in on my Venusaur. So he must... He must be pretty damn sure that number one, his Tokius is going to outspeed me, which it probably would anyway. And number two, he can take a Sludge Bomb. That's not a situation I want to be in. I need these webs up. So at this point, I have to take out Galvantula because I need, because Galvantula is the perfect switch in for Togekiss for the reasons I explained earlier. So I switch out Galvantula. And like I said at the start, Spirit Tomb is our Pokemon that we bring in when we just want something to take damage. We don't really care about Spirit Tomb. It's fine. No problem. Putting the pressure on. It's always it's okay. It's not bad. He clicks Extra Sensory though, which is perfect for us. Perfect. He must have assumed he was going into Venusaur. He goes for Volt Switch. Because we're calm natured, we take that pretty damn well. Pretty damn well, Spirit Tomb. I'm impressed. At this point, I just click Willow Wisp. Anything that came in, do you want to get Willow Wisp? And I missed! Will-O-Wisp on Togekiss would have been perfect, would have slowly chunked it down and Ice Shard would have been a guaranteed kill on Togekiss. But we go into our dedicated Togekiss switch in, which is our Galvantula. Fairly certain he's just going to go for Defog again, which means we can just click Webs again. Same reason as before, if we click Webs, we go first, he kills us, we keep up Webs. So I click the Webs, up they go, they're there again. He either clicks Defog here or Air Slash. He just clicks Air Slash. This is going to kill off Galvantula. But now we have the webs up and we can come in with Mamo Swine and take out a hell of a lot of his Pokemon. Especially since we burned the Shookerberry on the Victini. He has to withdraw here because he can't take the Icicle Crash. I would outspeed every day. He has, doesn't have enough speed investment on Tokus. Clearly defensive one. Raikou comes in, caught in the sticky webs. Raikou is not going to take any hit. It might have taken an Ice Shard, possibly, if I clicked that move. I'm not too sure. But I just clicked Icicle Crash. Fairly confident I was going to outspeed the Togekiss, unless it was fully speed invested timid. But down goes the Raikou, and Mamo Swine is now going to be the bull in the China shop that he is. We we'll lose some life orb damage. Out comes Not Ditto, which is the Zoroark. And Zoroark caught in the sticky web. At this point, I actually got a little bit too tunnel vision. I got a bit tunnel vision where I was a bit like, this is it. This is what I planned for. Sticky webs and Mamo swine. Go, just click all the moves. He brought in Zoroark. Now, Zoroarks can be special or physical. You all know this. This Zoroark actually goes for Sucker Punch. And it does a crap ton of damage. And it's Life Orb. So now that's put a huge dent in our plan of Mamo Swine going through the team. Yes, it killed the Zoroark, which was a big threat to us. But with Life Orb, that means I cannot just run through the rest of his team with Mamo Swine. At this point, he knows this. He can figure that out fine as he brings in the Sceptile, which gets caught in the sticky web. Now, the only reason he would bring in Sceptile here, because he knows he's going to die to an Ice Shard. He knows 100% for a fact Ice Shard will kill. And I've used Ice Shard already, so he knows I have it. The only reason he would go Sceptile here is if he was going to switch out into Victini or Tyrantrum or something else to take the Ice Shard damage 
and just let my life orb damage start racking up. I knew this. I knew this straight away as soon as he brought in the Sceptile. So he, I switch out. I need this Mamoswine still. I can't just let it go down to life orb damage. I go out into Venusaur. Venusaur is a good middle ground to deal with Victini and Tyrantrum. As he does switch out, predicting me to go for the Ice Shard. He goes back out into Victini. I know I can take the V-Create. He gets caught in the sticky web. I'm not outspeeding him. He just clicks U-Turn though. I could have maybe gone out into Golem there. But it wasn't. It, I didn't really need to. Venusaur could take any one hit. And I think at this point I just clicked Sludge Bomb. I did. I clicked Sludge Bomb there for him predicting me to go for the... Him predicting me to go for Earthquake. He does have the... Is it, is it Kapaya Berry? Kaperi? Kabaya Berry. To reduce the sludge bomb. And now he gets rid of webs. Very well played on Jack's part. Very well played to get those webs out. That was a huge hindrance to his team. But now I just click sludge bomb again. And take out the Togekiss. So now the plan is different. The plan has completely changed. With his Raikou down. And his Togekiss down. And his Zoroark down. Mamoswine still runs through his team. However I no longer outspeeds the Victini. And I no longer, and I, there's a chance I might not outspeed the Tyrantrum if he is choice scuffed. I have to get Rox up. Rox is now the priority because Rox is going to put a damper in Victini, which he keeps clicking U turn on. And the Rox is going to help with the fact that I can then take, definitely take out Sceptile with an Ice Shard. And if I get Rox up, then I'll have Golem, and Golem can take on. Tyrantrum pretty well. Plus, do not forget, I still have my Choice Scarf Mew sitting in the back that has Earth Power and Sludge Wave. So with some switching around, I can Earth Power Victini, Earth Power Tyrantrum and Sludge Wave, or Dazzling Gleam even, the Sceptile. But down goes the Togekiss to the Sludge Bombs. That is an issue out the way, because now Venusaur can be used as Death Fodder as well, as he goes into the Tyrantrum. At this point, I just click Giga Drain, and thank God I did, rather than clicking Synthesis. At this point, it was another matter of, if Venusaur dies here, no problem, I get to bring in Golem. So I just click Giga Drain for damage. Thank Buddha in heaven that I broke that sub, because that would have been serious problems if Tyrantrum was left behind a sub. He, get, he is leftovers though, and he knows I break the sub now. He can't afford to just let me stay here, so he pretty much has to kill me off here. He clicks head smash, Hey, head smash, I'm fine letting Venusaur die, Venusaur done its jobs perfectly well today. And now I get to bring in my golem, which is exactly what I wanted, I wanted to bring in my golem, I wanted to get stealth rocks up. Rocks were needed, now he has no way to get rid of rocks, late game rocks, rocks rocks rocks. He switches out the Tyrantrum though, not wanting to take an earthquake, and I have sturdy, I would definitely kill him. He goes out into the Sceptile, as I said. Rocks, rocks, rocks. We get rocks up. Now Victini can no longer just U-turn around and he can't keep switching his free Pokemon around willy-nilly. I switch out to preserve my Sturdy on Golem. I don't want to lose that. I go out into my Death Fodder, my Take a Hit, and I don't care if you die Pokemon Spirit Tomb. Put some pressure on Sceptile. Why not? He just clicks Energy Ball. Didn't really want anyone else to take that damage. Took it pretty well. I'm surprised, Spirit Tomb. Spirit Tomb took that pretty damn well. Considering he wasn't full health, if he was if he was full health, he might have been able to take two. So, very impressive, Spirit Tomb. However, he kills it off. No problem for us. I have no issues with that at all. Spirit Tomb goes down. At this point, I'm free to bring Mamoswine back in, and I can just click Ice Shard on something, because I have my Mew in the back. He lets the Sceptile go down here, though, to the Ice Shard. It was 100% going to kill, no matter what. Even if he brought in Tyrantrum there for damage, I could have just brought in Mew. It didn't, I didn't have an issue with that. Now he's going to bring in the Victini. Now I want to preserve Mamoswine because I know I outspeed the Tyrantrum, which is perfect. I know I outspeed Tyrantrum. So I, send, I take out Mamoswine, put Golem back in using the same strategy that we used against Alex when he had Victini. Rocky Helmet damage on Victini. It's so damn good to have. Now Victini dies to rocks. So we only have to deal with Tyrantrum. We may not have our Sturdy, but I'm fairly certain Tyrantrum can't kill Golem in one hit. And even if it does, Mew can come in and kill with an Earth Power, ladies and gentlemen. So, 
It's only over when the fat lady sings, but at this point we're in a damn good position. He clicks Dragon Dance, knowing he pretty much just has to sweep me with Tyrantrum now, that's the only way he can win. I have to kill him with an Earthquake from Golem, depending on his spread he might have been able to live it, I'm not sure, I haven't calced that. But, we take out the Tyrantrum, critical hit, not sure if it mattered, but if it did, that's unfortunate. But we got a few crits against us this game either way, it was kind of a crit heavy game actually if you look back on it. Victini comes in, dies to the rocks, Golem with the double kill at the end. And ladies and gentlemen, your team, West Shan United, is the winner and gets to stay in Division 1. That was the best played match I had all season. So many plays during that match I was so proud of. I didn't even have to use Mew, but I kept it as a win condition for the whole game. That's a problem I've had all season, is preserving win conditions. I stuck to my plan of sticky webs no matter what. When that plan ran out, went to my contingency plan, rocks no matter what. Mamo Swine was the truck. He stayed the truck throughout the whole thing. Good game to Jack though. He really came out and pushed me to the edge and really brought out the best battler in me. So thank you very much for that battle, Jack. And ladies and gentlemen, you can look forward to West Chan United staying in Division 1 of the Pokemon Premier League. If you enjoyed this match, make sure you leave a thumbs up, guys. If you didn't enjoy it and you think I suck and you wanted me to get relegated, you can leave a thumbs down. That is your own entitled opinion. Leave a comment, though, on what you thought of the battle and what you thought of this different style of commentating the battles. If you prefer this way of me pausing and explaining moves a bit more, let me know and I might bring it back for next season. But thank you all for watching, thank you all for your support on the team throughout the whole season. And we will see you all for the next one where we attempt to not finish in the bottom three. Take care my love muffins and I will see you all very very soon. Mwah! Bye bye.